Hey everyone, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oro Reports. Now, you may recall back in December 2015, when I blew up Christmas Eve on Sesame Street. And as I said before, I don't watch Sesame Street too much these days as I did during my childhood, because I feel like the 70s, 80s, and 90s were the best decades of that show. However, on the topic of Sesame Street, we're going to look into a Sesame Street movie from the mid-80s, which took the Sesame Street gang on a family-friendly cross-country road trip. Released on August 2nd, 1985, this is the Sesame Street movie, Follow That Bird. So, let's get started. Big Bird loves spending his days on Sesame Street with all of his different friends. However, social worker Miss Finch feels that Big Bird should live in an environment with only birds, like himself. When she sends him to live with a family of dodos in Illinois, Big Bird cannot help but think of his friends back home. Deciding Sesame Street is the place for him, Big Bird begins an adventurous journey back to where he truly belongs. So, what do I think of this movie? Well, while this movie is mostly aimed for little children, it's still a fun road trip, and I love this movie for that very reason. But, before I get ahead of myself, let's move on to Mustang Notes. The movie was produced by Sesame Workshop and Warner Brothers and filmed on location in Ontario, Canada and at Toronto International Studios in 1984. The street set was built to look more realistic in this movie. The expanded street set includes a music store, a fire station, an auto body shop, a family clinic, a bakery, a bookstore, and a grocery store. Early on, the Sesame Street people noticed that Oscar's trash can on the set was too new and clean looking, so the crew had to bang it up and make it dirty. According to Noel McNeil, after filming the footage of Big Bird on the farm with the kids, the filmmakers discovered that the film was badly scratched and unusable. The actors, crew, and performers had to return to the same location, but it was months later, and it happened to be winter. Many of the green leaves the audience sees are spray-painted, and after each take, the kids would run to put their coats on. Also, fun fact. This was the first of two Sesame Street feature films, followed in 1999 by The Adventures of Elmo and Grouchland. Also, this will be the final Muppet film to be released before the deaths of Jim Henson and Richard Hunt. Now, while watching this movie, even as an adult, it feels like a longer Sesame Street episode. Plus, the country environment that Big Bird goes through on his journey back to Sesame Street look really nice, even though... I've never been to any of the states between New York and Illinois, I don't think, unless Pennsylvania counts. But there's one scene in this film that was a real riot, and that was at the Don't Drop In restaurant, which is a popular place for grouches. I mean, the foods and, well, on the menu look like they came from the garbage, and it has grumpy employees and customers, even their phone is disconnected. But, this scene becomes nuts when the waiter catapults salad at everyone in the restaurant. <sighs> Makes me glad that Chili's doesn't have a catapult. Now, what would be a Sesame Street movie without wonderful songs? The first song is The Grouch Anthem sung by Oscar the Grouch and a Grouch Chorus at the beginning of the movie. In my opinion, while this song has nothing to do with the movie, 
it's still nice to listen to, even if it's a tad negative. Also, I think one of the grouches in the chorus could be Gary Grouch, whom fans have seen in the Alphabet game. The second song is Ain't No Road Too Long, sung by the late American singer, songwriter, and musician Waylon Jennings. while giving Big Bird a ride in his turkey truck. This is my favorite song in the whole movie. It feels like the kind of country song you'd listen to while on a road trip or a vacation. Also, this song gets sung by Gordon, Olivia, with Cookie Monster, Grover, and Count Von Count. Next is One Little Star, sung by Big Bird, Olivia, and Snuffy. I like this song too, because it feels like a really sweet lullaby. Next is my second favorite song in the movie, Easy Going Day, sung by Big Bird along with his two new friends, Ruthie and Floyd, played by Allison Court and Benjamin Barrett. In my opinion, this is a really fun song to lift your spirits. Plus, I think Ruthie and Floyd are really nice kids, especially when they help Big Bird escape from Miss Finch by telling him to hide in the hayfields. Next is Upside Down World, sung by Ernie and Bert. While they are flying above Big Bird in an airplane. Fun fact, while filming this song, Jim Henson and Frank Oz we're actually in an upside-down biplane 18 feet from the ground. Gee, that must have been really intense. Anyway, while this song is nice to listen to, it feels kind of pointless. Because Ernie and Bert would have easily found Big Bird if they weren't so easily distracted by singing this. Plus... It would have been better if they had just landed right near Big Bird. But, I guess the filmmakers couldn't let the movie end too early. The last song is I'm So Blue, sung by Big Bird while he's in a cage at a carnival owned by the Sleaze Brothers. This is the saddest song in the movie because... It's about Big Bird wanting to go home back to his friends. <sighs> anyway, now that we got Mustang Notes out of the way, let's move on to the cast. Our main character, Big Bird, is voiced by Carol Spinney, who also voices Oscar the Grouch. In my opinion, Carol does great when making Big Bird sound young, friendly, and fun-loving, and Oscar's so obnoxious and grouchy. Next is Mr. Snuffleupagus, a.k.a. Snuffy, voiced by Martin P. Robinson, who puppetized Leonardo from the 1990s Ninja Turtles movie. and also voices Telly Monster. Now, Snuffy doesn't do too much in this movie other than look after Big Bird's nest while he's away and send a postcard. Snuffy even appears as an illusion while Big Bird is lost in a cornfield. Next is Bob Johnson, played by Bob McGrath. Bob's role in this movie is rounding up his neighbors to organize a plan to find Big Bird while he stays on Sesame Street, keeping track of how close they are from Toadstool and Big Bird. Gordon Robinson is played by Roscoe Orman. Gordon drives a yellow Volkswagen Beetle. Also, while I do like Gordon in the show, what Gordon does when rescuing Big Bird from the Sleaze Brothers by standing on the hood of his car was pretty dangerous. 
Joining Gordon on this trip is his sister Olivia, played by Ileana Reed. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Linda, played by deaf actress Linda Bove. And Cookie Monster, who has a bad habit of eating pieces of Gordon's car. Maria is played by Sonia Manzano, who during her junior high years got to be in the off-Broadway hit, Godspell. Maria rides the sloppy jalopy with Oscar the Grouch, Telly, and Homer Hawker, who acts as a substitute horn due to the sloppy jalopy's horn not working. While Oscar is driving, Maria has to make sure that Oscar doesn't mess around or go off course. Grover is voiced by Frank Oz, who directed Little Shop of Horrors and has voiced in Star Wars Episodes 1 through 6, including Zathura, Monsters, Inc., and Inside Out. Grover uses his super flight to find Big Bird, up until he ends up stumbling into Gordon's car when he got exhausted. There's also a scene where Grover tries to free Big Bird from a cage by using his super strength to bend the bars, but to no avail. Count Von Count, my favorite character in Sesame Street, is voiced by the late Jerry Nelson, who voiced Balthazar in The Christmas Toy and The Ghost of Christmas Present in The Muppet Christmas Carol. While Count doesn't have that many scenes, he's still such a riot, especially when he counts cars when he and the others are off to find Big Bird, counts telephone poles while driving, counts keys, while Maria is trying to unlock Big Bird's cage, and he even counts during the end credits. Plus, I think Count's Countmobile might make Batman jealous. Next we have Kermit the Frog of Sesame Street News, voiced by the late Jim Henson. And, of course, Kermit's only role in this movie is being a news broadcaster like on the show sometimes. During his broadcast, he interviews with the Dodos and Miss Finch. Speaking of which, let's talk about the new characters, starting with Miss Finch. Voiced by Sally Kellerman, who I only know as Sunburn from the non-Disney Snow White sequel, Happily Ever After. Miss Finch is a social worker who works for the Feathered Friends. She thinks Big Bird would be better off with a bird family. And after Big Bird runs away from the Dodos, she is determined to find him by any means necessary. Next, we have Sid and Sam Sleeves, played by Joe Flaherty and Dave Thomas. These two are scam artists who operate a lousy carnival. They want to capture Big Bird and put him on display. They first tried using a net, which would have worked if Big Bird hadn't ducked. But they do manage to put him in a cage when he asks for a place to hide from Miss Finch. Shortly afterwards, they decide to paint Big Bird blue and make him into the Blue Bird of Happiness. Thankfully, after Big Bird is free, the Loser Brothers get arrested by a police officer played by the late, great John Candy. For counterfeiting, extortion, fraud, impersonating a dentist, and apple theft. <laughs> it's like I say, nothing gets by a cop, especially if he's played by John Candy. 
Rest in peace, man. There are also other guest stars that appear in this movie, like Chevy Chase as a newscaster, and Sandra Bernhardt as a waitress at the Don't Drop In. And now, let's move on to my final words. Overall, Sesame Street, Follow That Bird, is a classic childhood movie. And while I don't watch Sesame Street too much these days, I'm never too old for classic Sesame Street like this. The plot is a great road trip story, the songs are fun, and the characters are just as memorable as they are in the show. Even if the Sleaze brothers are pathetic villains, and Miss Finch can be scary to several folks watching this. But still, if you folks are fans of classic Sesame Street like I am, or if you want to share this movie with your children, then be sure to keep an eye out for this childhood classic. I give this movie a 91% out of 100. Well, that's it for today, everybody. Be sure to join me again for my next blog, Mustang Power. I found out a long time ago You gotta learn to say yes when life says no Don't dwell on the bad times once they're past That kind of thinking gets you nowhere fast Cause there ain't no mountain you can't climb if you hang on tight and just make up your mind Once you set your heart to moving on Son, there ain't no...